Today we're going to make a bench out of wood and steel. Hi, Ben here. If you're like me, you're probably more familiar making stuff out of wood than you are working with metal. So that's why I wanted to do this series where we're introducing some easy ways to incorporate metal into your DIY projects. I've always found that the most difficult part of woodworking is in connecting the different pieces. And that's why for this project, we're showing how you can make these really cool custom metal brackets using angled steel. Now you don't need any specialty tools or welding equipment. All you really need to cut the steel is this tool. It's called the angle grinder. You can get one for under $50 and it's incredibly versatile. So let's get started. Steel comes in a variety of different profiles and right angled extrusions are one of the most common. For this project, we're gonna work with two inch by two inch by one eighth of an inch thick steel angles. I bought this steel from Home Depot, but if you're going to be making some large purchases, I recommend going to a dedicated steel yard. There's a lot of ways you can mark lines on steel. You can scratch a line using a sharp piece of metal. My favorite technique is to use a silver sharpie. There are also some paint markers that are made specifically for steel, but I still think the silver sharpie works best. When working with metal, it's really important to secure your workpiece before cutting it or drilling holes through it. We're going to cut the steel with an angle grinder and an abrasive blade. Cutting steel produces a lot of sparks, but you can adjust the guard on the blade to help control where these sparks go. I like to start with some shallow passes just to establish a groove right along the lines that I drew. I then use that groove to guide the blade as I cut all the way through. All this friction can produce a lot of heat, so be careful when handling the steel. It can be quite hot. I then removed the abrasive cutoff wheel and exchanged it with a 40 grit flap disc, which I used to smooth over all the cut edges. Before drilling holes through the steel, I used my metal punch to establish a little divot. This helps to keep the drill bit from wandering around when you're drilling through the steel. If you want to extend the life of your drill bits, it's a good idea to use some cutting oil. Now I want the screws to sit nice and flush to the surface of the steel, so I used a countersink bit to drill an angled recess for the screw heads. It's not uncommon for steel to have a little bit of rust on it. You can just use sandpaper to sand that right off. If the steel is pitted and has rust in it, a wire brush on a drill works well for removing it. An orbital sander is another option, but doesn't work so well if the steel is deeply pitted. Once the rust was removed, I cleaned the steel thoroughly using some acetone. The freshly cleaned steel is highly vulnerable to rust. I like to protect it right away using some paste wax. I just use a rag to apply a heavy coat, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then rub it all out. That blue-gray coating on the steel is called mill scale. I personally like the way it looks, but if you want to get all fancy, you can just take your angle grinder with a flat disc and sand it all away. If you want to go back to a nice gray color or get rid of the shiny cut lines, you can spray on a patina. I'll put links to the products I used in the description box below. If you want to get really fancy, you could make these brackets out of brass. Brass is a bit more expensive though, so I tend to use it sparingly. I decided to take advantage of the fact that brass won't rust and use it to make a shelf for this Daily Essential starter set that my friends over at the Dollar Shave Club sent me. Now you may have noticed at the beginning of this video I was unusually clean shaven. And that's all due to the sponsor for this video, Dollar Shave Club. They sent me this Daily Essential starter set which is full of all sorts of cool stuff. There is a really well designed razor handle, a pack of the best razor cartridges I've ever used, and these awesome grooming supplies. We got shave butter which works much more like a soothing lotion rather than like a typical shaving cream. A lovely body wash that smells of amber and lavender, and some one wipe charlies. These are nice refreshing moist towelettes for cleaning your brass. That's right, back to the brass. I cut the brass the same way I did the steel sanded it with 150 grit sanding pads, drilled holes for some brass screws that I bought at Home Depot. Now I wanted to make a large hole in the shelf to hold the razor. So I used a stepped drill bit which, which drills bigger holes the deeper you go. I finished the shelf with some hand sanding using 220 grit sandpaper and then screwed it to the wall of my bathroom. And there you have it, a nice little shelf for shaving. To step up your grooming game and get your own Daily essential starter set, go to dollarshavedclub.com homemade. All right, back to the bench. 
so we cut out the rest of the brackets out of angle steel and then drilled and countersunk the holes. We had some old mulberry boards sitting around that were way too warped to use for traditional woodworking projects. Mulberry is not an easy wood to work with and these weren't just a little bit warped, they were ridiculously warped. We trimmed the boards with a circular saw trying to get the flattest pieces out possible and then ran them through the thickness planer. We cut four triangular shaped pieces to use as legs and sanded them nice and smooth. Now the inside corner of steel angles has a little bit of a curve to it, so we sanded over that edge of the triangular pieces so that it would fit in nice and flush. We finished the mulberry with one coat of Danish oil. Now because the mulberry is so hard, we pre-drilled all our holes before screwing on the steel brackets. We used pan head screws to screw the brackets to the bench top, but used machine screws with nuts to bolt on the legs. We clamped the board to the legs to use as a guide and then used our Japanese pole saw to trim the legs to length. Now my brother Nate wanted the bench top to be really flat, so we ended up with the world's shortest bench. But I switched it to a longer board and decided that the warp actually looks kind of cool. Making consistent joints with wood this warped would be really difficult. So I really like this technique of using just a little bit of steel in the connection details. For additional info, check out our website. And if you want to see what we're working on next, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.